All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I can see the the numbers counting as people flow through to the uh, to the Zoom chat today. We might uh, just give it a couple of seconds as uh, as everyone joins. Great to have you here from wherever you're dialing in today. You can see we're getting close to close to 100 participants now, which is fantastic. All right, we might begin. So I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land and pay my respects to elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. So thank you, welcome everyone. My name is Jeremy Naiman and I lead the seller operations and marketing team here at eBay. Uh, some of you may have met me during our recent roadshow, all the roadshows, uh, and it's great to be able to uh, to, to come back and, and present to those folks that uh, that joined us on our national roadshow. Um, I'm going to be co-hosting today uh, with Neil Mackay, who a lot of you probably met as well during those roadshows. And for those that uh, you, you you know weren't able to attend, um, you get the fortune of, uh, of hearing us today. Um, we've also got the amazing seller advisory panel with us today as well. Uh, and they'll be co-hosting with Neil and myself. Uh, we've also got the eBay team in the background and they'll be here to answer questions and, and, and drop some comments in the chat. Um, I've got my trusty uh, offsider Ria in the room with me here as well. Um, as we go through today's webinar and town hall, we'll drop um, some comments uh, and links into the chat. So please keep an eye out for that. Uh, there's also a Q&A function there. So uh, you know, if you've got questions as you go along, please feel free to drop them in there and, and we'll answer as we go along. The whole purpose of today was uh, was to do a, a follow-up to our All Ears Roadshows. Um, as some of you, of you may know and may have attended, uh, we did a national roadshow across the country to really get back and connect with you, our seller community, uh, which we're really excited about. And what we're going to do today is share what we learned, what we heard from you, uh, what we're doing, um, and of course, have time for, to hear from the seller panel and also uh, questions at the end. So uh, enough for me right now. I am going to throw it over to Neil, our Director of seller uh, Selling. Take it away, Neil. Thanks very much, Jez. I'm very slick indeed. Uh, one thing that you can guarantee from this presentation is that you'll get some really good content. I can't promise how slick it's going to be though. So um, my name is Neil Mackay. I'm the Director of Selling. For those who I've not met, uh, I've been at eBay for about three and a half years. And um, over the last kind of 18 months to two years, we've been on a pretty transformational journey. And um, we created the panel um, about a year and a half ago off the back of a pretty confronting experience at Retail Global. And we realized really quickly that we'd lost touch with the community and uh, we asked for some help. And from that, the panel was born. We've been pretty public about having a panel. And when I speak about that, um, people kind of look and go, oh, a panel, most companies have got a panel. Um, but actually this panel is a little bit different. It's, it's been hand selected. Um, we're incredibly close. Um, I, I relate it to, to kind of a family situation uh, where there's a lot of constructive feedback, um, but a really, we're aligned in the positive intent to create the platform of choice for sellers designed by sellers. Um, so without further ado, I would say, let's introduce the panel. So um, I'll pass over to Paul um, and maybe you can kick off. Um, Jez, the next slide if possible. Hey guys, I'm Paul from Hooked Online, been selling on eBay since 2005. Um, we've got 10,000 SKUs and love being part of the panel and I hope you guys get something out of today's session. Cheers. Hi everyone, um, I'm Georgina Bennett and I'm the owner of Gems Wedding Supplies. I started selling on eBay back in 2004, items from around the house before I moved on to um, selling educational games I made which was very time consuming. So then I moved on to wholesale and um, more products in bulk that I resold, which brought me to the business I've got today. So um, I now work with my husband. And so we work out of our home up here in Queensland.
Hi guys, I'm Jason. I've been online since 2005 on eBay and uh, it's pretty much full-time operation for me as well. And to be a part of the panel is uh, one of the best things I've probably done on eBay platform aside from selling, obviously, just to help you guys along the way as well. And pleasure to meet all you guys through all the years event as well. G'day everyone, nice to be here. I'm Justin Tedis from Engine Parts Australia. We've been selling on eBay since around 2002. Um, in the parts accessories category, which is pretty exciting. It's a big, big part of eBay and a big part of our business. So looking forward to today and hopefully helping you guys all further your eBay journey. I'll introduce you to Matt. Matt, you want to follow from here? Hi, um, I'm Matt. Um, I've been selling on eBay since around 2010. Um, I run Cycle Station Online, which sells bike passing accessories, and I've just been in the middle of a big warehouse move for the last week and a half, so I've been <laughs> pretty busy. Um, I'm also admin of the eBay Sales Australia group, and one of the best things about being on the panel has meant that uh, it's given me direct access into eBay to uh, assist members of the Facebook group uh, with their problems, and we've solved all sorts of things for different members, and that's been really satisfying for myself. Hi, I'm Janelle. Um, I'm from Something's Country, based in Queensland. I've been selling on eBay for over 15 years. Um, we have a retail-based bricks and mortar shop as well as an online presence. Um, eBay is my platform of choice, um, but do sell on many other things as well. Hi guys, I'm Ian Johnston from um, Simply For Me. Been an eBay seller since uh, 1999 across a, a number of different verticals like um, Justin, I was in auto parts and accessories for a long time and, and currently running a health and beauty business. Um, really happy to uh, have been part of the panel so that we can uh, liaise with eBay and um, yeah, make make things better for, for all sellers and, and the whole eBay community. Cheers. Thanks everybody. Um, you've, it, it, I mean, it's not, it's not always been smooth sailing, right panel? Like um, we go off to a couple of bumpy starts and I'll be the first to admit, I, I think we met for about three months when we first launched. And um, I remember receiving a, a, an email JK Rowling would have been proud of from uh, a member I won't disclose the name of, but it was Matt. And he said, you've got, you've got this all wrong. You know, um, you, you're coming to these events and you're talking to us, you've got your own agenda, but the whole purpose is to listen to us and prioritize what's important to the community in order to solve policy process and experience on eBay. So. Um, we heard that and changed the, the whole agenda. Um, there's a couple of things I just want to be really clear on. One, we meet every week and at the centre of the conversation is the community's issues. Second thing is the panel are passionate about eBay succeeding and all of you succeeding on your own missions to, to build a business and um, they're not paid. So there is no commercial benefit. Um, for any one of these panels to be part of this um, community and what we've built here. But fundamentally, it's changed and evolved how we operate. It's changed how the functions of eBay engage, both buyer and seller, and uh, we couldn't be more proud of it. Um, but the one thing I would say is we're just scratching the surface. That we're at the start of our journey. It's 18 months in, and um, I can't wait to be talking 18 years from now about all the success that we've delivered, but um, we're, we're, <laughs> Jason's less excited about 18 years from now. But um, I think what I would say is that we're scratching the surface. We've not reached our full potential. There's something within our gift that we can really hammer and change and implement. And then there's other things that we need to seed as part of a global operation. Um, and uh, today, what we'll talk about is really briefly, like what we heard from you guys at the All Years event, what we're hearing in the community, and then secondly, what we're doing about it. When I talked earlier about um, us having a panel and many other businesses having panels, the reason why this is different is one, the people within it, um, and two, um, the culture in which it's created at eBay Australia with the view that a problem that we walk past is a problem that we're willing to accept. So doesn't matter how small or how big these issues are, they're important to you and they're important to us. So um, our competitors might think about going, oh, that panel sounded all right. Um, and I'm supportive of that, but 
what I would say is that um, there's something unique and special about the chemistry that we've got as a collective group and a passion um, that the group's got about the community um, that will be really hard to be transferable. So um, jump onto the next slide. I'll, I'll, I'll just say um, this next slide is really important because as part of creating the platform of choice for sellers designed by sellers, we need to hear from you. Um, otherwise, we end up making our own conclusions around what's important. And um, for those people who are vocal in the community, we, we prioritize what we hear from them. So if you wanna be part of it, have your say, there's gonna be a QR code popping up on that screen imminently. I think there's some lag. I didn't promise a slick presentation. I promised a, a useful one. Um, the slick one's gonna be V2. Um, but um, scan that QR code and build eBay together. Um, if we don't hear from you, we don't know what you're, what's, what's important. So um, fill that in. I'm gonna pass to Jez, I think, and he's gonna take us somewhere on that plane. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. Uh, and yes, apologies, folks. There is a bit of a delay with the, with the slide movement. So I'm gonna try and preempt and read Neil's mind as we're talking through this to make sure, <laughs> make sure we get the lag sorted. Uh, but as, as Neil said, we've, we've been on, on a journey and, and that journey, uh, this year in particular took us back to in-person events after three or four years of not being able to do face-to-face -face events and really uh, connecting with you, the seller community, uh, through the All Ears Roadshow that we ran through August and September. It was a great opportunity for us to get on the ground uh, in Perth, Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane and meet as many of you as we could, but also allow you to share um, the journey that we've been on with the seller panel who, you, who you've just met now. Uh, and really the aim was to, as the name suggested, be All Ears and get, get, get to the crux of what really matters to you and your business, collect that feedback through that QR code. That took a little while to come up on the screen, but it's going to come back again later on. So you can definitely scan it again, but really understand what matters to you and what can we do uh, to help you succeed as a seller on the eBay platform and really um, make it the platform you know designed by sellers for sellers. Um, if you didn't make those events, uh, it's okay, don't worry. There is a lot of content that we've got from those events, the presentations that a lot of the, the eBay team that will, will um, be on later on uh, went through. So I believe Ria uh, will be dropping some links into the chat directly to that content as well. Uh, so definitely take a look at that if you weren't able to attend. We as eBay learned a lot through these roadshows. Um, and so I'm going to throw back to Neil to, uh, to ask you, Neil, what were the key learnings that you took out of the roadshows? I reckon the first is, is really clear. It feels as if eBay was almost a facilitator of the community connecting with one another. And I think the most passionate bit, the, the, the most valuable part for me within the whole roadshows was, was, was hearing from the community. But um, I heard a lot that eBay is a bit of a lonely place. So you're trading on your own. Um, and actually if eBay could facilitate more events to connect like-minded people to talk about best practice and ways of operating, um, that's a place that we should, we should lean in. The second part, um, I think there's, there is a hypothesis that depending on what category you play within, um, the issues may differ. And I think the conclusion there was actually, if you're on the marketplace, uh, selling parts and accessories for cars or selling sneakers, um, the issues are the same. And actually we should attack it horizontally rather than vertically. And then the third was, I, I kind of connected us as a group as a bit of a family. Families are anchored in trust, um, respect, but also um, they're the people that tell you um, they're the people that are closest to you and they're the people that tell you things that you should be working on and developing and you should take that on. And I think um, we need to be much more transparent around the things that we can solve locally versus the things that need global support and be really clear on those timeframes. So locally, if it's within our control, it's weeks and months, but if it's global, it could be months and years. So um, that's just the nature of the size and the scale of the operation that we're part of. And I think we need to be really more, 
much more transparent about the things that we're we're going to do and how we're going to do them and the things that we're not going to do. Back to you, Jez. Awesome. Thanks, Neil. That's great. Uh, let's hear from the panel now. Um, I might throw it to you, Justin. What were the what were the learnings? What did you get out of the roadshows? Yes, the roadshows are fantastic. It was great to sort of be part of the roadshow as a fellow seller with all you sellers on the on, on the on the call today, but also as part of the, I guess the mouth to talk to eBay about what is important to us as sellers and to have that fear that eBay is listening. We all love that, and that's what's been great about it. So, if yeah, the roadshow was really good to connect with sellers, to have that sort of conduit between sellers and eBay. Whereas eBay, as Neil said, it's a bit of a lonely place, it feels, but it's um, it was a really good, really, really good way to connect with sellers. Because yeah, us all behind the screens, it is, it is, it's uh, they're pretty much on their own. But um, it's part of part of the roadshow. Seeing the real people at eBay, real faces, real humans, real Aussie people, and us sellers as well. We're, we're all real people as well. So I think that was a really good opportunity to do that. It was, uh, it, was, it was great to see the human face at eBay. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, we, we're, we're definitely human, right? I think we got that comment quite a bit um, at the road shows. You know, does eBay exist? Are, are there humans there? And, and we're definitely we're definitely here. Um, Georgina, what about yourself? Uh, what did you get from the, the road shows? Oh, the thing I loved the most actually was just talking to all the other sellers. And there were so many sellers that came along that were just like me, just working from home, selling online, selling on eBay, lots of solo sellers and mums and dads. And just to be able to share information um, and ideas together with people that actually understand what you're going through day to day. Um, and, and one more thing that I really liked about the roadshows myself personally was the workshops um, because there's been so many new tools that have come in lately. And just to make sure that I was actually using the eBay tools properly and effectively for my business. Uh, one prime example was I was on the uh, marketing promotion stand and there was talk about how a lot of buyers just buy one product, which was what was happening in my store. So um, the discussion was about using coupons to try to increase that cart size. Now, after all the roadshows were over and I came home, I sat down, I thought, I'm going to try this. I'll use a coupon, give them a discount if they buy more than one product. Now, looking at my reports now, I've got one third of my customers using that coupon now and buying more products than they were previously. So that's just massive for me because that just increases my sales. So I suppose for all the sellers that are listening today and that have come to the roadshow, if you haven't come to the roadshow, um, that link that Ria put up with the information, it's just those little bits of, like, I suppose we call it those nuggets of information. Just get those little bits of information and take them back, use them in your business, and it can really help improve um, your, your own business. Thanks, Georgina. It's it's so interesting to hear that and your experience because we, we heard that from a few folks um, after the road shows as well. And I think, as you said, you know, Rhea's put those links to the content. So, you know, folks, if you weren't at the road shows or, or you couldn't stay to go and, and sort of be on those workshops, definitely check those out um, in case there is a nugget that you, know, you find similar to, to Georgina. Um, but last but not least, um, Matt, I'm going to throw it to you. What about yourself? What did you get out of the road shows? Um, for myself, it was pretty similar to Georgina. Like I am fairly engrossed in the world of eBay, <laughs> as uh, most people will be know. But like, even on the actual, you know, uh, workshop that I was actually helping present, I still learned things there about, you know, that was about service metrics. And the thing I particularly uh, was a bit vague on was the difference between what happens if you are over the limit with item not as described cases versus, um, item not as received cases, I thought it was a penalty for item not as received cases where in reality it will just push out your um, your delivery estimates based if you're not performing. Um, that was just one little thing, but overall I think that eBay is such a big platform. It's not it's it's a complex platform. There's some bits of it that are very new, there's some bits that are very old. Um, there's some bits that work magnificently well, there's some bits that have a little few little friction points, but Either way, there's just so much to it that none of us really know everything as much as we think we would like to like to. Even even those who are more more, um, it's a bigger part of their business, or and especially for those a smaller part of their business. So I think, without just sounding like an advertising pitch for watching <laughs> watching the those that content, I think there there has to be something in, in there that nearly everyone can uh, 
confined. Um, so yeah, that that was good. And just the other thing was just it's cool meeting people who you've spoken online with and had people come up to me who said, "Oh yeah, I know you from the group." And so, "Oh yeah, yeah." So that yeah, that was that was pretty special actually. I enjoyed that. Yeah, somewhat of a bit of a celebrity, I reckon, Matt. Um, you know, with people coming go that far. Over. <laughs> I know I said you were going to be the last one, but we've we've actually got a little bit of time. So, Ian, I'm going to put you on the spot. You'll be the lucky last if that's okay. Um, can you share what you know what what you found from the road shows and uh, any key takeouts? Yeah, look, I, I guess on a, a similar theme to the, the other um, panel members, it it really for me it was. An amazing combination of just bringing everybody back together having been around so long i remember some events that ebay put on back circa 2010 2011 um, particularly western australia where where i was from and I, I don't think too much has happened over there since but you know having been on the platform since literally day one it, it you know it, it amazes me you can still teach an old dog new tricks because just sort of talking to other sellers i learned some stuff from other sellers directly and Hopefully a few learnt a little bit from me and then I think we all learnt from, from the presentations. But, you know, eBay, eBay is particularly important. And, and, you know, whilst I as a seller sell across, you know, multiple marketplaces, eBay is that one that, that doesn't compete with us. You know, eBay is our friend in, in many ways. So it's really important, I think, as a community to continue to evolve as Matt said, very <laughs> simply, too much for, for one person, you know, to be able to absorb all on their own from the platform, but it's that networking and sharing of information because each business is, is unique and different. So look, I, I, I loved it. It was just so great to meet so many amazing people and, you know, passionate Australians growing, growing their businesses. I'm going to jump in and add something else too, oh, if you don't mind. I <laughs> leave mail from, from Paul. All right, go for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, 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 the, the, the best thing that I learned from there was from, you know, luckily enough to go to all four was, that the majority of people were, had the same issues and the same problems. And what I got out of it, I guess, is to see that eBay actually listened and it was really like in their face that most sellers are experiencing the same problems. And, and I'm stoked to see that eBay listened to all of that feedback and they're actually working behind the scenes. Um, so I'm really glad to be part of that. Thanks, Paul, and and thanks everyone for the for the commentary there. Uh, it's actually Paul, that was great, great segue actually in terms of what we heard um, through the roadshows and from the community. So, uh, so Neil, do you want to do you want to take over from here and and um, yeah, share with the with the folks what we learned? Yeah, hundred percent. This is getting right into the the whole reason we thought we'd follow up and kind of um, get everybody together for those people who are at the all ears, but also for people who who were not. Um, we heard pretty consistent feedback around these four things. First was feedback on eBay. Um, and there were a couple of components that I'll talk to momentarily. Uh, the second was eBay customer service. The third um, and the fourth, a little bit about, uh, well, third, certainly cert a bit of myth busting. Um, so there's there's quite a lot of noise in the community around having to relist and list and what does that do in search? So, Jeremy's going to take us through a little bit of detail there and then unpaid items lastly. So um, I'll take the first two and um, I'll pass to Jez for the other two. And um, effectively, our job was to go out, listen to the community, but actually do something about what you're wanting us, um, uh, what you're passionate about and the, and the changes that we need to make. So feedback on eBay. First was around... Um, buyers are able to leave us feedback. Why are we not allowed to sh share feedback with them? That that one is is not going to change. So um, they're, they're, we're not going to change the process and um, sellers will not be open to leave feedback to buyers. But there are processes by where you can report a buyer. Um, and I think if we connect as a community, we've got a responsibility to one another to make sure that the marketplace is full of buyers that we want to, to deal with. And if you do come across a buyer that is potentially behaving in a way that um, doesn't fit within your business model, escalate that and it will be investigated. Um, the second part is around um, feedback more broadly, like the actual system. And um, look, there's an appeal process. So when you get feedback left, and that feedback isn't aligned with what you viewed to be um, 
reality from purchasing that item, sending that item and receiving that item. There's an appeal process and actually a lot of you use it today and you use it really well. I'm trying really hard and I'm being honest here to try and change some of that process, but that's gonna take a long time. That is a global process and to change that locally is without, um, without our control immediately. Um, but what we are looking at doing is, is two or three things in order to enhance that feedback mechanism for those things that have been an experience that perhaps the buyer has received that is dissatisfactory, that is outside of your control. We're looking at processes by where we can share that within your listing and within your store. Um, but I know uh, people on the panel are pretty passionate about this topic. So I might throw over to Paul just to share your point of view. Um, yeah, I'm very passionate about the feedback and it was amazing at all the road shows. It was one of the most, I guess, whinged about um, functions on eBay. And with the, the, yeah, the, I don't see the point in leaving negative feedback for a buyer to start with. I don't think that is going to achieve anything. Um, if there is unfair feedback left, negative feedback left, left for yourself, um, I've, I've found the best thing is to go on to chat um, be super polite, have your all the details ready, um, point the, 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 the agent to the listing if they're complaining about something that's not correct in the listing and if you know it is correct. Um, but it is very frustrating when people voice their opinions and I'm glad to hear that eBay is looking into the feedback system as in it's meant to be feedback on the experience, it, it, not a product review as such. Um, so yeah, the other thing I would say don't reply to a negative feedback before you speak to an agent. That's really, really hard to get it removed um, if you reply to it. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing some changes that I probably can't really discuss here, but we've spoken as a panel and, and, and with eBay in great depth because it is a, a real pain in the butt, uh, unfair feedback. So as Neil said, you know, it's not something that a decision that can be made in Australia overnight and it has been pushed to global and I'm excited to, to, to see where it goes and, and hopefully there will be some, some changes. Um, the other thing, if, if you can go to my eBay store and have a look, I reply to all the negatives. I reply fairly, honestly. Um, I, I really do think that not many people leave negative feedback just to be spiteful. I think they do leave the negative feedback because they're unhappy with um, the product or the service. The other thing I find really unfair with negative feedback is on postage speed, which is beyond our control. But again, if you, the, 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 the eBay chat now, live chat is really, really good. If you can prove to eBay that you've sent it with tracking within your handling time um, and, you, and you speak to the agent and say, look, it's beyond my control, um, that can be various factors from flooding to fires to whatever. Um, I've always found if, you, if you're polite and you've got your points and you stick to it, it will get removed. That's about it. Thanks very much. Um, so watch this space on, on the feedback stuff. Um, just to summarize, like you've got, you've got three things. We, we won't be opening up feedback to buyers. Um, if you are uh, seeing behavior that buyers uh, are, are not matching with what your expectation of buyers on eBay are, make sure that you escalate that and not walk past it. And then third component, um, I am going to be a dog with a bone on changing some of this feedback stuff. So whilst I can't commit anything today, uh, know that I will continue to be relentless on change here. Um, and I hope to give you feedback, uh, <laughs> feedback, uh, positive feedback soon around that process change. Um, the, the next one we spoke about uh, was customer service. This was, this was everywhere, same as feedback, um, top two or three, uh, depending on which state you're in. So the feedback was, I, I find it hard to access customer service or get help from eBay. So um, before I talk about what we're doing, uh, what I thought we could do is just a bit of a live demo. So we've got our head of customer service, Victorine, um, who's gonna take us through a demo on how we access GCX from the hub. Um, now this might be interesting. So like, it would be. Can, you, can you tell us what GCX stands for as an acronym, Neil? 
Oh, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much. So that is our global customer experience department. Apologies. Good call. Thanks. Victorina, over to you to take us through the live demo. Uh, and I'm sorry, um, can you see my screen there? No? Yeah. Yes, we can, Vic. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry. So uh, I'm Victorine, um, Head of Customer Service Design. I've been in, in the eBay 11 years, and um, I'm here to just give you a demo on uh, how um, most sellers can connect with our customer service teams. Um, which we refer to as GCX, as Matt uh, referred to a minute ago. Um, now, I said most customers simply because uh, depending on, on the type of customers, we may have different contact tester strategies, but what I'm going to show is, um, you know, uh, most, most customers uh, would have a very to that. Um, if I go too fast, do stop me. Um, so you're all very familiar with ebay.com.au. I, I don't want to... Uh, to uh, to try to teach you something that you already know. However, I'm not sure um, whether or not you're, you're, you're aware of that help button. Um, that's where you will find a, a, a CS. So if you're on ebay.com.au, um, you click on help, you'll come into what we call the help hub, which is basically um, the, the summary of all customer service questions uh, answered across all policies. And as a, as a customer, if you want to talk to an agent, what we uh, invite you to do most times um, is to actually select a topic. And the reason why we ask you to do that is um, our teammates are trained and specialized in certain topics. So uh, we have teammates that are specialized in answering selling questions, and we have teammates that are specialized in answering restriction questions. Um, and for us uh, to give you a response in a timely manner and in a response that is complete, we will ask you to give us this indication um, as you choose, you know, where to choosing the topic. So I'm just going to demo here. Um, I'm on my husband account. Um, I uh, I asked him just to, you know, to help me with this one. So um, Iris Demert is my husband um, and is a general seller. Loves is doing is is a this is a customer to a consumer kind of setting. And if he wants to contact somebody about listing an item, it would go into setting. And then um, you can see, and you, hopefully you're familiar with this, you can see that there's lots of different topics, right? Um, he wants to contact uh, CS about creating a listing. Um, and there you can see there's a, a lot of content and you may ask yourself, why, why do I get all that content? The reason is because a lot of the questions you may have, have answers to on this content. Um, there is also a shortcut. So you can see this blue button here. It's actually a shortcut to our flows. So um, some, uh, some customers may not find it easy to find a way to list. Well, if you click here, you actually go and, and go into the listing flow that apply for your segment, right? Um, so if you're a subscriber, you may have a different uh, listing flow that you have for uh, a general c 2 sellers. Um, so in the case, Derek um, read through all the content and, and can't find what he needs. Uh, and it happens, right? Because there are questions which may not be, you know, a uh, 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 general knowledge and uh, you need to talk to one of our trained teammates. Um, so the demo goes at the bottom of the, of the page and you see contact us. And that contact us button will um, get them it, um, to, uh, to connect our assess teams. And some of you may be uh, experiences with, that, with this, but first of all, them it, because of the type of customer he is and more importantly, because of the topic it shows, will be uh, uh, pushed into our automated chat assistant. So our bot, as we call it in eBay, um, will, uh, will, uh, will appear here. And uh, typically, and you can see I've done tests on my uh, husband account, but typically, you know, um, you would put a question such as, you know, listing my item, right? And apologies for the typo, super small on my screen, um, but uh, uh, listing an item and then the automated assistant will go, okay, um, what do you want? And you can, you can you know, choose here, but you, may, you don't want to actually go back into to content, right? You've gone through a full help page and you don't find what, so what do you want? You want to talk to an agent. And if you, talk, if you want to talk to an agent, pretty simple, you just type agent and you have options that are showing to you. And these options will, show, will be either chat so chat with an agent or Avas call you. Avas call you is a voice option, except you tell us and you give us the number of, um, on which you want us to call you, rather than you calling us on the phone number. So um, if, if I was going to click here, 
you can see it's going to say, um, it's going to take a minute. Um, would you like to know, uh, is that okay? I'm going to say no because I want to demo another experience in a minute. But if I said yes, it would show a different uh, pop-up and you would be in the queue to talk to one of our teammates, okay? Any questions? Probably not live, but you can go ahead with the Q&A. Um, so I'm going to say no, simply because I want to go back to uh, another experience. So because different topics have different experiences, if you recall uh, what I said a minute ago. So um, so here is Demerit. Um, and we're going to go back to the help page, right? Because uh, we pretend that we're brand new to eBay or not too, uh, not too familiar with it. We're going to go into our topics. And then um, I'm going into a, a topic that is often um, uh, uh, one for which you know people are, are quite uh, uh, vocal about, and I'm talking about filling a defect, right? So you may need to contact us about opening a defect because of a situation that was outside your control, right? Um, so you click on the on the topic. Same thing. There is lots of content, very important uh, content. We we spend a lot of time to make sure that there is as complete information as it can be, but it doesn't cover everything. And more importantly, you need to talk to someone or connect with someone to get the appeal done um, on your account, right? So you, uh, you, you, you don't find what you need to, and you'll see that the experience is different here. You, you're, you don't, you're not going to have an automated assistant. What you have is our seller help, which is basically an offline request. So it's like a web form, right? And then you have our chat option. And here you don't have the automated assistant. You go straight into the queue, um, you know, ask them what's your issue. Usually we would ask you to provide us the information around the order and so on and so forth. And you click start chat and now, you know, you're in connect with our system. So this is the, in a simpler way, the way which uh, currently we uh, give access to our customer service teams to our customers. That's really it for me. Thank you very much for your time. Can I ask a question, Vic, uh, on behalf of others? Am I would I be correct in saying that uh, what options are available in showing for contact, be it voice versus um, the chat options can vary depending on the time of day when you contact? So, so it's a very good point, Matt, and we didn't rehearse by the way, so it's uh, it's live. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, the hoops, the, the hours of operation. I'm trying going to try not to use acronyms, but. A lot of, there are a lot of them in eBay. So the the, who, the hours of operation in eBay Australia are normally um, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Friday and 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, uh, uh, Saturday and Sunday, and that's really for chat. For the phone option, it's nine to six Monday to Friday. Okay. Now that's for uh, 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 most of our topics. Uh, you'll find that, for example. We have uh, an account takeover, you know, phone number, and this is 24-7 because if there is somebody who has an account that has been taken over, we don't want to wait another 24 hours before somebody gets to it, right? So the topic uh, will define the hours of operation. The topic will also define um, the channel offering and the uh, type of seller will also define which teams is going to handle that, uh, uh, that type of contact. Does it answer your question, Matt? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Uh, I reckon everyone will think that I uh, that was prompted, but I actually came up with that on the spot. Have a look at you. Um, I'll just add uh, a couple of things. This is an area that we're investing significantly in. So um, we, we're looking at three things. One, we're looking at surfacing that process that Vic went through there. And I know within the Q&A section, some are kind of like, this is kind of basic, but these types of forums are a case for all types of sellers, people who are new to the platform, existing that have been on the platform for many years and, and people who dabble in selling too. So the one thing I would say is we're going to try and surface that much simpler. And um, there's development work ongoing right now uh, to be able to do that. The second thing is what we've heard is one, uh, we find it really hard to figure out how to contact you. And then when we contact you, we struggle to get resolution. So across specific topics, we're looking at creating an escalation team by where we have a trigger of how many contacts you've made into GC, uh, the global customer experience team. 
within a same period of within a, a, a period of time yet to be defined, where that call will get escalated to a team and that problem will be case managed. So um, they're two big investments. And the third part that I would just raise to be completely transparent, GC, Global Customer Service, GCX, they're, they respond to queries based on a policy and a process that's in place. Now, the real art to change, um, you can change customer service in two ways. One, you can resolve the contact that comes to you much cleaner and quicker than what we do today. Or two, you can prevent that contact from needing to happen. And in order to do the second component, we need to work on policy and process and remove that friction straight from kickoff. And we're creating a design studio by where all of the functions that own the policy and the process connect with the global customer service team to operate on the most important policies and processes that need change to remove the need to contact at all. So this area is, is getting significant investment. There's gonna be transformation happening. Um, the two areas that I mentioned, one surfacing those channels is gonna happen um, early next year. And the second component around um, the escalation path will be this, the, the first half of next year. So exciting things to come. And we, we wouldn't have made that investment if we hadn't heard from you that this was an area we should be investing in. So thank you. I'll pass to Jess. Great. Thanks, Neil. Uh, Victorine, there may have been a, a question in the Q&A too about customer service. So I'm not sure if you've already answered that, but uh, if not, we can come to it uh, towards the end. Um, so continuing on what we heard, uh, this one, I guess, for the eBay team uh, and, and the panel actually is a bit of a, a myth busting one that we want to, I guess, set straight um, for the folks out there. We heard this come up a lot across all of the roadshows, to be honest, and it was around listing every day and, and do I need to list every day to appear in search? And what we can say is, no, you don't. You don't need to list every day. Um, that is that is a myth. and. Uh, we know there are a lot of folks out there spending a lot of time uh, in their day relisting and ending listings and relisting. So you can take that time back. What we would say, though, is that listing every day can help, but it's got more to do with uh, products that the buyers are looking for and having fresh inventory in your store. So if you're listing new products frequently that the buyers are looking for, that's going to have the best possible um, impact to how you appear in search. So we just wanted to, to do a bit of a myth bust on that one because it did come up a lot and we could see that it was taking a lot of sellers time in, in doing that daily. Um, but what we would also say, and many of you probably saw um, Ian's presentations um, in terms of uh, eBay's best practice listing guidelines, guides for growth. Uh, definitely refer to that because that is the surefire way to have the best chance to, to, to rank in search and to sell your products as, as effectively as you can. That QR code on the screen there links you to the guides for growth, um, but Ria's also put a link through in, in the chat to um, directly to, to that content. Um, the second one there on the screen was my search ranking is impacted uh, whenever a buyer opens a request. So we want to clarify this, that you won't be impacted by just one, um, one buyer open request. Uh, what eBay does is look at your overall performance as a seller. So your seller performance and your service metrics and looks at that in, um, in totality. Uh, and that's what contributes to um, search ranking. So uh, if you are evaluated to be below standard uh, in the seller rankings, then you may be placed lower in best match search. Um, but what we want to say is that uh, it won't happen if you've got just say one open request and also the speed in which you uh, resolve those cases uh, also helps as well. Um, it's not a forever impact if you're speedy enough to um, resolve some of those cases. So uh, we really hope, hope that that helps clarify some of the myths that we were hearing throughout the, um, throughout the road shows. The last one, the final one there is, is on unpaid items. So unpaid, unpaid items are frustrating and you're looking for more support from eBay. 
Uh, so what we can say on this one is the technical team are working on this um, and, and looking at a solve, which will mean buyers have to put their payment method in before submitting an offer, which should reduce the number of unpaid items coming through. So uh, this is, uh, well, the testing for this will commence in, in early 2023. So we we know this is a challenge and it is on the, the, the radar for our technical and product teams globally. Uh, and your feedback was vital in us being able to sort of pass that through and be able to get testing done early uh, in the new year. So that sort of wraps up the, the four key themes that we heard and what we're doing about those items from the roadshows. I guess, as Neil mentioned earlier, it, it can be hard, I guess, when uh, you, you see things or we're saying things are coming, things are happening, um, you know, and, and there's some timelines attached to them. And, and to Neil's point earlier, uh, there's some things that locally um, eBay Australia can, can change. And, and we can actually uh, make changes on fairly quickly. And, and they may be things from a couple of weeks to, to a few months, but being part of a larger global organization, there are just some things that we really need to fight for hard uh, to, to push up and really rally our global counterparts to make those changes. And so what I would say uh, from all of the eBay team and, and the seller panel is that we're here to advocate for you, the seller community, on the things that matter to you. And we're going to keep advocating and, and pushing the changes that help to make our platform better and help you to sell more effectively. So, so definitely know that from us. When we do make changes, um, we commit to updating you on those changes uh, through all the different channels that we've got available. And what I would say is just keep an eye out for um, the, the community posts. We, we use the community boards a lot for um, updates uh, to, to products, features, enhancements, any issues that are happening. Um, for example, the, the terrible weather that we're having at the moment and the, and the floods going on across the country. We use the community posts for that, uh, but also email, seller center, um, the help pages, and also the seller panel uh, help us a lot through the, the eBay uh, for sellers Facebook group as well. So there's a lot of different channels that we will try and communicate to you and, and keep you updated across any of these product changes, of course, through webinars and face-to-face and -face roadshows um, as well. So what's coming up next? So we've got a few platform changes and improvements coming up over, over the next few months. So uh, we've got Zip launching very, very soon, which will allow uh, eBay buyers uh, another payment method in which they can buy from you and, and hopefully benefiting the seller community from more sales. So that launches very, very soon. We're simplifying item not received claims, which will save you a lot of time. And a new messaging experience is going to roll out to more users. Uh, and a lot of this was announced throughout our seller news recently as well, which you may have seen um, over email. Uh, and also you'll be able to meet eBay and the seller panel at Retail Fest next year. So Retail Fest will happen between March 28th and 31st next year. Uh, we're going to be there. We, we're going to have a stand there and the eBay team and the panel will be there. So we'd love to see you, see you all there if, uh, if you're there. Finally, um, again, the QR code for feedback uh, we recommend, guys, if you do have further feedback, please um, submit it through this QR code. It comes through to all of us here um, at eBay, and this is what we're using to uh, look at plans uh, and our strategy for the years to come. So this is, as Neil said, multi-year journey. We're committed to uh, making you know the platform for sellers by sellers, right? So we can't do that without you and without your partnership. So please help us with that. How to stay connected. We've sort of touched on this a little bit already. The seller community announcement board is a great way to stay connected with us. The seller center, the eBay sellers Facebook group, which uh, a lot of the panel are active in and helping to communicate um, on, on our behalf as well. And of course your email, um, we will keep you updated through email also. All right, I think if I'm not mistaken, it is time for Q and A. So we'll open that up now. Um, I'm going to start with one question that came through prior to uh, to the webinar, actually. I'm going to read it off um, the piece of paper I've got here, and Emma is going to answer it. Thank you, Emma. Um, so when will eBay introduce fairer rules 
forcing buyers to communicate with sellers in cases of false claims. At the moment, um, buyers can opt not to, to talk to sellers to resolve a, a claim. So Emma, if you want to jump in on that one. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Emma and I work in, in Marketplace Trust. So, so both on the buyer and the seller side um, of eBay's uh, platform. I guess um, that might explain to you why, I, you know, we try and take a balanced view here of the buyer and the seller side of things. And if I'm interpreting this question correctly, and, and feel free to um, jump to, into the Q&A afterwards if I'm not, but it's sort of around... Um, returns or I not received claims that you you might feel um, weren't quite right. Um, we do know that when uh, things don't go as planned for the buyer and either the item doesn't arrive or they need to make a return, it is already not a great experience. And so we do try and make it as smooth as possible for buyers. Um, and the idea of this is that if buyers have a good experience here when something goes wrong, um, if we resolve it, you know, as well as we can, then they will come back to buy on eBay from you and from, from other sellers. So, so that's the intention, I guess, behind um, some of the automation that, that we do have here. In saying that, we know it's a challenge for sellers. And so, you know, we are working to improve it. Um, a couple of examples that I'll give. Uh, recently, we introduced a photo mandate when a buyer is returning an item that isn't as described, uh, which should help to make sure that buyers are using the accurate um, reason for, for, for returning something. Um, and for item not received requests, uh, this was mentioned briefly before, um, we're working on a solution whereby the experience that you have on our platform is more in line with, with the protections that you receive from us. So if as long as you provide valid tracking for an order and we see a scan there, um, what we'll do is eBay will manage the entire process of that item not received uh, request um, from the opening of the claim to the, to the resolution and you won't need to touch that. You'll see that it's being handled um, by eBay, which should be a, a big improvement and that's coming uh, hopefully early next year. Um, as I said, hopefully that answers it, but, but if not, feel free to jump into the Q&A. Great, thanks, Em. That's that's fantastic. I am going to go through the. the there's some some really good questions coming through, so I'm going to read them out and feel free, guys, um, panel or eBay to jump in. There's one here that I think I can answer, although Paul, it looks like you would like to answer it as well, from what I can see in Q and A. But is there a discount offer for Retail Fest? Uh, so there will be discounted tickets for for our sellers. So we'll um we'll provide more details as it gets closer to that uh, to that time. Um, another one's come through, I believe from Cleo, anything planned for minimizing scammers and refund abusers? So I think that Emma probably goes on to, that sort of extends onto what you were just talking about as well, I think. Yeah, I, I can also see that, that Tom um, is writing an answer there. Look, we always try and minimize this as much as possible. Um, and there's actually a lot of work happening in our global team at the moment in, in order to try and fix um, some of these types of issues. They obviously don't come up very often. They're really, really rare, but when they when they do come up, that you know, they're quite painful for sellers. Um, so it's definitely being worked on. Um, I don't know. And, you know, as Neil said before, we are very reliant on our global teams. And so I, I can't sort of say what what will happen and, and when but i will say that we do have protections in place if this if this does happen to you so um if you have um a, an issue here um i would encourage you to get in contact with our customer service team and they should be able to, to help you um protect you in the in these circumstances thanks emma there's another one here um, from Taha, and I think what we might do, um, we, we might be able to answer this in a roundabout way, but may take this offline, Taha, to uh, address it directly with yourself to see if we can help here. Um, so what happens when an item has been removed from our listings and then we contact customer service to explain how the item's not forbidden to sell? 
Uh, but then the customer service representative isn't familiar with the product and it then results in the item staying unlisted, but other sellers still being able to sell the same thing. So from what I'm gathering, this is a, an item that eBay is deemed, um, you know, not able to be sold on the platform. It's taken down, but other sellers are able to list it. So um, that one there, we, we may address that specific case, but in terms of if you're seeing sellers sell thing, sell items that you believe shouldn't be sold or go against policy, you can actually report those sellers through the report um, function in the help hub. Um, and that then goes through to, to our team to review and we can actually take action against those listings and, and those sellers. Um, that case is quite specific just in terms of the customer service angle and they're not being familiar with those products. So we might take that away separately, uh, but there is the ability there as sellers um, to, to actually report other sellers there as well. Okay. Um, so we've got one here. Hi panel, as a seller about eight years ago, I was able to stop another seller from using my photos, but this month I found another two sellers using my photos, but eBay doesn't stop them. Why? Um, does any of the eBay crew want to take that one? Otherwise I can I can jump in. There's been it's been like that for years. Um I do sort of have to agree with, with the poster there, because it is a bit crap if you take your own photos. However, it's all in the terms and conditions. Um you don't, I mean, you take the photo, but eBay's got access to it and other people can use it. I, I used to get upset myself about that. Now I just move on because there's no point worrying about it. And I'm not sure if I'm 100% correct, but I have been told if you have taken the original photo um, and someone else copies it, that the Google algorithm picks up on that and you'll be punished that way. Thanks, Paul. Um, we've got one here from Mel. The eBay, Ameri uh, the American eBay community has been told they will soon have the option to add 24 photos. Will we also be getting this feature? Um, I personally don't know of that that change, but the team may. And if we don't have an answer, we'll, we'll follow it up and, and put it on the community boards. Um, eBay folks, anyone have an answer to that one? Otherwise, we can follow it up. No, we need to follow up. I, I can take that action. Great, thanks, Vic. Hey, Jez, just going back on the uh, fact that you were talking about the listing everyday activity that gets spooked about on the social platforms all the time. I think some of the key takeaways are what you were drilling into. It's not necessarily about the active or consistently listing. It's about what you said, having the right product and from that actually doing the business basics as well. So uh, one of the key chats that were happening at all the events was basically people were paranoid about having to be productive all the time with these listings because all the social platforms are saying, do this, do that, do this. And people were getting anxious from the reselling community themselves at the base level when really if they focus on the business basics of doing their emails, doing their best offers, sitting, setting up coupons, setting up the right store process, doing the item specifics and actually doing some research in the seller hub under the research tab and actually looking if their products are of interest to the community or the buyers, that'll actually help them rank. Because the key question is not let's list more, it's how do we appear in the rankings or how do we get visibility on the actual platform? So the visibility is done through the activity. Just thought that'd be an important point for them to take away today. Yeah, absolutely, Jace. Thanks so much for that. Really, really good points. Thank you. Um, well, look, guys, we're, we're pretty much out of time now. There were quite a few um, other questions that came through that we didn't get to today. Uh, but what we might do is take them away. We can actually download those uh, and um, address them um, potentially through the community board. We might be able to uh, pop a few of them up. So we'll update you on that. Um, but Neil, I might just throw it over to you to, to, to wrap up. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, like I said, it's it, that Q&A part is always an area that we need to give more time to, I think. Um, so what, what we'll do is we'll post all the questions in the community with answers and responses. Most people who have been at the All Years Roadshow have got my details, but if you don't, get in touch at nmackay at ebay.com. I saw Osher uh, on there mentioning my name, so get in touch if, if you guys need a hand. But um, I just want to thank you for the attendance. It's been fantastic. I want to thank the, the team, obviously, for spinning this up, but um, and also the panel. This is this is a big. It's a journey. Like we actually don't know what's next. I think it will be retail fest. 
um, and we'll wish you all uh, a happy Christmas and a really strong holiday season over the next couple of months. But uh, thanks everybody for joining. Um, it's the beginning. Let us know what you think about it. Um, for all those unanswered questions, we'll be back in the community with responses. And for anybody else that wants to get in contact and provide feedback, you've got my details. And um, we'll see you again soon. But um, to everybody that's joined, to the eBay team, and a special shout out to the panel. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, I really appreciate it.